Hello all the crazy people out there, my name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making games, and it is time to start catching up a little bit on making 3D wizard games because I have been slacking on that recently because I've been busy with other things. Anyway, so last time, um, I mostly got uh, moving platforms and dealing with moving platforms out of the way, so that's uh, like elevator blocks that go up and down, that's uh, like pushy objects that will, that will move in a direction and push you around. Um, it's not perfect, it does not account for rotation, so uh, rotating objects and having the player respond to those correctly are, are out of scope. And also, the player will not come to land perfectly flush against objects that are moving around because the collision system is not that precise. Um, I do want to go and tidy that up later, but that'll be a later thing because I want to move on from collisions a little bit at this point. So today I'm going to start uh, dealing with player states. I've been talking about those. I'm going to use an extension known as Snow State, uh, made by so uh, Sohom Sohan. I've never said his name out loud before this, and I, I'm gonna just assume that I got that wrong. But anyway, he has made uh, what is so far my favorite state machine uh, extension for Game Maker, and I will be using that to deal with player states and enemy states and any other thing that may or may not have discrete states uh, that can exist in this game, because state, um, state machine systems are wonderful. Let's see. So I'm not going to make this like a tutorial on how to use this. I do want to do that eventually, but that eventually is not today. So uh, this is the GitHub repository. I will have it linked in the description of the video if you want to have a look at it yourself. Um, let's see, the last release appears to be um, 314, very nice number, uh, from last October. I'm going to download 314.yymps. I may or may not have a copy of that on my computer already, and I'm going to... Uh, um, that is, um, that is Wizard Ducks. I think I can safely close out of that right now. Uh, I'm going to drag that into the Game Maker IDE. Yes, please. I can just add everything. And we'll be on our way. That itself uh, is something that definitely should be committed. Um, whenever I add an extension. Generally a good idea to make a commit. And while, uh, is Feather stuck analyzing the project again? Feather has a habit of getting stuck. At least, this is a, this is Game Maker 2023-4, which is a couple months old at this point. Um, in the past, Feather had a thing for getting stuck while analyzing projects. Can I just uh, turn that off for the time being and have it... Alright, you know what? That's going to annoy me. I'm just going to restart Game Maker. So... The, uh, the way that Snow State works is that you, um, it's basically an object-oriented state system, and it's got a bunch of wonderful, uh, wonderful code uh, written so that it will, like, fire events when you do things such as enter and leave states and that sort of thing. Um, for example, when it comes to the player, um, where is player? Where is the player object? It's been, like, four days since I did this, and I already completely forgot how this game is architected. Okay. So in the player's create event, I'm going to say, uh, we are going to say self.state is going to be a new snow state. It's going to take a couple couple arguments. It's going to take the initial state uh, as a name, as a, as a string. Let's see. And we can really go all in putting all the player's behavior in a snow state state. Um, I don't know if I want to go that far. Why is Feather complaining about this? Oh, it's because this is a, an unclosed. Anyway. I'm going to call the default state default, and we can add on potential states to this with um, by using the add method. And maybe I actually should have left the WizardX program uh, project open because I'm going to need a refresher on exactly how this works. I want to say I I'm going to add a um, the add argument is going to take the name of the state that we're adding and a like a struct containing all the methods that happen. Uh, for example, when you exit, when you enter a state, um, and then any other methods that you might want to attach. Uh, let me uh, look at Wizard Duck's puzzles. Okay, so that's indeed that's indeed it. So there's going to be two states for enter and leave, or two methods rather that get bound for enter and leave, and that's um those are sort of automatic. Those will get fired. Uh, when you enter a state or leave a state, and then there's any other any other um, methods that you might want to tack on. Okay, and then um, the second parameter to the snow state constructor is whether to execute the um, the enter uh, event when you when you first create the state. 
Uh, and I think I'm going to specify that to be false. I don't remember what the default is. So these are going to be uh, these are going to be methods. Uh, it's important to note that uh, these methods will belong to the uh, to the snow state, but they will um, they'll be bound to the player object. They'll be bound to whatever object like owns the state. Anyway, I'm going to uh, to show that this system is working. I'm going to add my own event uh, on um. event method, whatever you want to call it. That's going to be update. This is going to be called by me in basically the, uh, the player's step event, right? And uh, for now, just to show that the system is working, we can show a debug message that says we are in the default state, something along those lines. And uh, let's see, player. So we're actually only dealing with a begin and end step. All right. Um, I thought it was regular step and end step, but I can work with begin step. All right. Anyway, uh, before I do anything else in um, before I do anything else, let me just go to the beginning of the begin step event, and we can call self .state .update, and that will call um, that will call the update method. And that should spit out a bunch of lines in the console that says we are in the default state or something to that effect. All right, cool. How fun. And we can ride the elevator up and down. All right, love those elevators. I'm sure they'll be getting some some utility in the um, when it comes time to start doing level design. So we can use this to start uh, separating some logic from um, this just giant blob of code that is the uh, the begin step event for the player. So the way that the game so far is set up is that if, um, is this used for anything? This is used, okay. Um, the way that the game so far is set up is that the player will set up the, uh, the X speed, Y speed, Z speed variables for, um, for the player in the begin step event. And then in the end step event, uh, the game will actually act on that, uh, specifically in the NPCs um, end step event over here. And that will allow, if you have a player that is walking around, or if you have an NPC that is walking around, if you want the NPC to behave, uh, you don't have to rewrite all this step event code. You just have to um, uh, write some write some code that would basically interface with X speed, Y speed, Z speed in the NPC's begin step event, and they'll figure out what to do from there. NPCs, enemies, that kind of thing. And so if we wanted to, uh, we could take, let's say, all right, let's actually start with just all of this code. Uh, we can take all of this code and put it in the update um, event for the player. All right, that's a lot of code. That will be separated eventually. And again, this is a, this is a method that's going to belong to uh, the state uh, struct, and you're going to call it with like self.state.update or whatever, but it will, um, it will be bound to the actual player. Um, so we can access all the players' variables and that sort of thing from here. Um, the, uh, the fact that GameMaker does not auto-indent lines when you copy and paste code and indent it uh, bothers me more than it maybe rationally should. Anyway, um, we can perhaps add another state, and this is all a fluid interface, by the way, so you can say um, new snow state add, and then you can just chain it together like that. Uh, I'm going to make it maybe a little bit more explicit and say self.state.add, but after that I will chain them together. Um, that will return a copy of itself. We can um, add another state called, let's say, jump. And that's going to have a, um, a couple methods that belong to it. Uh, you don't have to define an enter and leave method if there's nothing that will happen there. Um, I am going to copy and paste a couple empty method definitions here just because I do anticipate uh, adding something um, eventually. For example, like when you leave the jump state, when you land back on the ground, like play a sound like your feet hitting the ground or something like that. Uh, when you enter the jump state, you can um, play another sound effect or that sort of thing. Let's see. You know what? You know what should probably happen is that this should probably be like its own method as well.
something like this perhaps. Because this is going to happen in several different uh, states that the player can be in. For example, the, uh, the default walking around state. The, uh, the jumping state, you're still allowed to control the camera. That makes sense and everything, right? And then um, like you won't be able to, uh, to move when you jump, at least. I don't know if I want you to be able to move when you jump. There's also, I suppose, uh, this, this is also uh, counted as camera controls, right? So not only looking around, but also uh, zooming in, zooming out, that kind of thing. Uh, that can fall under the heading of camera controls. And now we can look at separating uh, all this code, all this jump code, um, into the different states. So this will, the player will only be in the default state when they're on the ground. And therefore, if they're on the ground, if they hit the jump key, they can automatically jump. And I will make a method for that. This may go in the NPCs. Um, this, this method might belong to NPCs. I could see it being useful for NPCs being able to jump. Uh, jump speed. I'll make that a static variable. I don't remember if I've mentioned this before, but sometimes I will make variables like this static uh, just to hide the fact that like they're kind of they're kind of a configuration setting, but I don't want them to be like a globally accessible macro, so I'll just mark them as static to. Uh, to shout to myself that that is the case. It doesn't really make a difference if you're only referencing it once per um, like function call like this, but it's just one of the shorthands that I use. And also, as established, um, is grounded check isn't really relevant anymore. Like this looks totally redundant, right? Uh, because the player will only be able to uh, run this jump method when they're actually in the um, in the default state grounded. Um, we can also uh, assume um, all of this, for example, will only happen in the jump state. Uh, this is another instance of it, by the way. Uh, the only reason I wasn't doing this earlier when this was in the begin step event is because um, you cannot have static members in regular old game maker events, which isn't really fun. So um, let's see, I guess this is really like jumping or falling. This is like when the player is in the air. Should I rename it to airborne? I'll rename, that, I'll rename that to Airborne. So, um, it doesn't really make sense uh, to check if you're grounded when you already know you're in the air. Uh, however, uh, we, we can say that if we land, um, so self.state.change, uh, we can change back to the default state, and that's another thing that the jump method should do. Is uh, change you over to the airborne state. Why do you not like this? Oh, that's a... Uh, right. I really should. There is a way that you can have Feather shut up in, like, specific files. I don't actually know if that would help here, but it would be helpful if I could have Feather um, ignore stuff like this in, for example, input or scribble or that kind of thing. Anyway, let me see if this logic checks out. So uh, when you're in the default state, you're going to uh, check for jumping, and then you can jump if you want to. Um, and then, uh, oh, this is for climbing, OK. Um, go into the, uh, the airborne state. And I believe that will not um, trigger until the next frame. I am going to, am I still printing out? Oh, you know what? A better idea would be to make this a little bit more uh, legible. Is I'll put this in the enter and leave um, events. So this can be enter the airborne state and then leave the airborne state. And hopefully, this should be roughly equivalent to the code that I had before. 
but it's going to be organized a little better. So enter the airborne state, enter the default state, leave the airborne state. Okay, that's cool. So there is a little bit more, and I accidentally did it there. I That wasn't how I meant to do it, but uh, if you, for example, walk off a cliff, uh, you will not detect that um, you should start falling, because nothing, uh, nothing in this logic up here um, indicates to the game that if you're, if you walk off a cliff, gravity should kick in, because gravity is not processed in the default state. Um, so I can say, if, uh, not self dot is grounded, change our state to the airborne state. And I guess I'll put this at the, uh, I'll put this at the end. So, um, I'll do that to give the, the player a little bit of, like, grace period if they want to, like, if they're falling, or if they're about to start falling, but they, um, like, manage to grab hold on something they can climb on. Um, I think that, I think that, uh, chain of logic will work. I will obviously have to, to check. Anyway, so we're gonna wait for that to come back down. Can I, uh, I cannot jump quite high enough to reach that block, huh? So, uh, oops. Uh, yes. Okay, so the fact that I don't have control while jumping is a little bit hard. Yeah. Alright, I should have should have thought that one through, I think. Alright, anyway, I, I will start falling. Alright, cool. Let's see. I can put this in its own method, I think. handle movement, let's call it. And in, um, in both the default and in the jump, the jump states, uh, we will be allowed to handle our movement. And that should um, that should allow us to, uh, steer while we're in the air. It's always a little bit weird in games when they allow you to, like, change direction where you're falling in midair, because, like, anyone who's thought about the laws of physics for more than about two seconds knows why that's a little bit silly. But, um, at the same time, like, it can be very disconcerting if you're in a game and you're not allowed to just, like, change direction in midair like that, because, um... When you don't have like as fine-grained control over exactly what your legs and your feet are doing the way that uh, you generally do in real life, like anticipating exactly how far you're going to jump and when you have to jump can be um, maybe a little bit aggravating. I do feel like you shouldn't be able to like start running while you are in the air. So if you hit the run button while you're in the air, you shouldn't be allowed to start running. But I think... I'll wait and see how that feels before I do any work about changing that, because if I want to change it back later on because I decide that I like the way that it feels better, then that's going to be a little silly. Anyway, um, lastly, there is the matter of the climbing state, but before I do, before I deal with the climbing state, I think I'm going to make a commit. Right, I think it's time to deal with climbing. So, um... If you're making a game yourself, it would definitely be easier to set this up probably like before you write all the movement code. Um, I did not want to just basically throw like a million game maker extensions at at like the video series at once. At the point where I was setting up basic player of the controls, I had only just um, added the input extension. I did not want to take that, uh, which I had not made a tutorial on at the time, uh, like as an added bonus, and I did not want to take that and. Um, say, oh yeah, not only are we doing this, but we are also adding a, uh, an external state system extension. Uh, that just seemed a little bit much, but if you're writing a game like this from scratch and you're going to use a system like this, I would definitely recommend adding it at the beginning and not trying to shoehorn it in later because the, the longer you put off adding that sort of thing, uh, the more complicated it gets to undo. Anyway, um, I, okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the climbing detection code um, let's add another method at the bottom here, and we can call it, like, handle climbing. 
And uh, this is going to deal with uh, deal with climbing. This is going to be exactly what it says on the tin. Let's see. You'll be able to climb in both the, uh, the default state, the default motion state, and also in the jumping state. So if you're uh, like if you're falling through the air and you grab onto something, you'll you'll want to grab hold. Um, I will add momentarily a climbing state, but first. Let me just look at this. Okay, so if you push the up key, I may. Okay, I think. Hang on. Let me uh, let me open up the uh, the Potter game again. So let's uh, let's take this. And I'm going to uh, the Splendify Challenge would actually be a really good map to test this on. Um, because it does have a lot of springing through the air and that kind of thing. All right. Uh, let's see. So regularly, uh, I'm going to like walk up to walk up to a, a ledge and grab hold on, onto it. Okay, so uh, the game actually isn't gonna do that if I. Oh, you know what? I think we established this last time. I can jump sideways into into things like that. Okay, that's interesting. And of course, if I were to jump like this, and uh, not quite what I wanted to do, but just barely grab hold like that, I would I would automatically, uh, automatically grab hold. All right, it's actually, it's actually a lot harder to aim than I thought. Anyway, uh, that was not all F4. Uh, F Apparently all F4 didn't work. Uh, F4 brings up the, the debug console in that game. Anyway, uh, does that change what I want to do? Should I automatically put the player in the climbing state even if they're not holding the F button? I'll hold off on that for now. Let's see. So I'm going to want to um, have an object that I can test climbing out on. So let me go with one of the test blocks. This is uh, the moving one and the one that's just stationary. Let's put that flat on the ground, and uh, if I run up to you, I should... Okay, um... The positioning of the, of the collider... I did have to go and recreate... Recreate some of the, like, hitboxes and that sort of thing uh, for this project a couple of videos ago because there were some... Um, let's just say that I, I may have accidentally uh, messed up my, my Windows installation and I may have had to uh, reload a bunch, of, a bunch of files on my computer from an earlier date and I may have had to uh, recreate a couple, a couple of these things. Anyway, where's the player? And uh, specifically, where is the player's climbing hitbox? I believe that's the nose. Um, what I've been calling the nose. I should probably move this upwards a bit, huh? All right, so I fiddled around with it. I've moved it up a little bit. And I also made the radius a little bit bigger. So I'm sorry, player, your nose is really huge right now. Um, let, me, uh, let me save those changes and let me export all of these to the data files again, and um, the climbing target now should be big enough that I can just detect climbing just by running into something. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Okay, so last minute, before I, uh, before I go and start adding another, uh, another state here, I probably should um, yeah, handle, handle climbing. Should I rename, like, we have handle, like, we have handle jump, we have handle movement, we have handle climbing, or we don't have handle jump. I think I'll, uh, I'll rename that to handle jump, and I will put this all inside if, um, input check. Was it just, grumble. Uh, it was input check pressed, okay. So I can... Uh, actually handle the detection for jumping in here, like that. Um, I do like it when all my code sort of looks like itself. 
Um, and I'll also handle camera. All right, so now all of my uh, all of my methods in my code have like similar names. Like this even could be um, like abstracted to like check landing or check airborne or handle airborne or something like that. But don't know if I'll go that far yet. How long have I been going for? Thirty six minutes. Um, do I want to do climbing now? Because I feel like climbing is going to be non trivial. Um, and that may push the runtime of this video longer than I want it to be pushed. Mm. All right, I'll handle climbing later, but I will do a few other state-related things, um, or at least one other state-related thing. So this, oh, by the way, before I forget, I, um, I was complaining last time about how there didn't seem to be a way to unhand cards. Uh, there actually is, and it's actually fairly easy. Uh, all I have to do is go into the settings and unassign it. To myself, which, considering that you that you can hand them by dragging them into your hand um, from a deck, I feel like there should be a way to unhand them in the same way. But at least there is a way to, to do that. Just want to set the record straight on that. So I can um, I can archive this. Can I not? Uh, can I archive a card? How do I archive cards? I feel like I'm getting dumber. All right, I'm gonna mark that as done. Um, player states, I'm also going to mark this as done. Um, all right, so I'm going to, um, I'm going to go into, uh, the, uh, the base 3D object. And in the base 3D objects create event, I'm going to, I'm going to give it a state. And most objects won't have a need for a state, so things that stay still don't need a state. That's just a, a waste of um, a waste of game maker processing time. Uh, generally, a waste of computer resources to give something a state if they don't need it. Um, I will put in the begin step event. Let's see. Uh, step begin step. If self dot state is not equal to undefined, self dot state dot update. And there may be other generic um, events that I decide to tack on like that. Uh, perhaps a like special effects when you're drawing uh, state or something like that. But uh, just future proofing this for later. So objects, especially enemies, but objects in general uh, that have different states, like a treasure chest has a closed, an opening, and an open state. Um, things like that. Uh, objects definitely will have a use for uh, states like that. All right. That's not going to change anything, right? That's a very minor addition to the code. All right, cool, we got stuck. That's not climbing, that's just the, the player landing on the corner and getting stuck. NPCs, do they, uh, do they have their own? Okay. NPCs do not have their own begin step event. So, um, let's see. Some state system cleanup. Uh, I'm gonna tag this as 0 0.16. Push that to origin. Oh, is Game Maker getting stuck analyzing the project again? That's fun. Um, I'm gonna end this video off here. Uh, you know what I haven't done recently is I have not looked at the metrics uh, for this project recently, and it's gonna be it's gonna be calling me to finishing in like. A long time from now because I haven't done a lot on this recently because as I said I've been busy with some other things but hopefully I'll be I'll be playing a little bit of catch up and I'll be getting a little bit more done than usual. Uh, climbing should be done in the next video. The rest of these I'm not sure about entity render loop that might make sense to be put off to be marked as complete until a later um, milestone when there's more stuff in the game but uh, this bug uh, we'll be getting done next time. I might also do the like the fake shadow under the player thing next time. I haven't decided yet still. Then of course there's the matter of the Unity map import. Anyway. Can I see the metrics for this at least? Like how am I doing here? Yeah, 0.6 points of effort per week is a little much. I'm gonna say 
Hey, if I hit four. Got about a month to go. I hope I can maintain a velocity of four or six effort points per week. Anyway, uh, if you want the code for this, look for the link to the GitHub repository down in the video description. I will also have a link to uh, Snow State down there as well if you want to mess around with that yourself. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute to the channel, links to that can be found in all the usual places. Otherwise, I try to post about two game dev videos a week on average. That's going to be one tutorial tutorial and one let's make a game like this. So if you're interested in seeing more material on the weirder things you can do in Game Maker, feel free to subscribe. I hope you all find this interesting, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Zenjamin, Vitro V, Square Crow, Syndra Larson, Manta Ray, Game Maker, Edward Holt, DJ Gibbles, and Army Armbuster for supporting these videos. If you want to contribute to the channel, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.